In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today's Gospel is about a call. Today we will look at on this Martin Luther King Jr. weekend at the call of Martin Luther King Jr., but also I want you to take a look at your call. In 1955 in Montgomery, Alabama, the issue of the day was forced segregation on city buses. Pastors gathered at a local Baptist church strategizing how they would solve this issue. Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to give up her seat on a bus to a white person and moving to the back of the bus. They took a few ideas and worked them around, but they couldn't quite settle on a single strategy until a young pastor volunteered to lead a boycott and a civil disobedience against the culture in power. A culture that gives white people a better seat on the bus and segregates everything from schools to drinking fountains. Martin Luther King Jr. was not a perfect person, but when he accepts his marching orders to go on a path to justice and truth, he radically changed this country. He was called by God to lead the people of this nation to a new place, and it wouldn't come without cost. Now Jesus begins his ministry by calling his disciple Nathanael's, and his reaction is first to judge Jesus by the place he was born. Prejudice wasn't born in the 50s in the United States and will not end in our lifetime. In today's gospel, Nathaniel meets Jesus and says to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathaniel coming towards him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. Jesus does not get offended by being judged as lower because of where he came from, from the town of Nazareth. Jesus pays Nathanael a compliment who immediately realized that he was the Son of God. Isn't it amazing how we can see things anew through the power of the Holy Spirit? And I believe we are called again and again when I do marriage preparation, I often ask the couple, when did you realize it? They look at me and say, realize what? When did you realize that you wanted to spend the rest of your life with this person? Sometimes they'll know right away. Other times they'll have to think about it. When was it? that I knew in my heart that I wanted to marry this person, that I wanted to spend the rest of my life. Jesus comes and calls each and every one of us, and I ask you the same question. When did you realize that Jesus was the Son of God? Last week I asked you, who was it that identified Jesus after he died on the cross? And it was the Roman centurion an unexpected person. Today I ask you, when did you realize that Jesus was the Son of God? And when did you answer the call? It all comes down to who we are as people and what we're going to be 
in this nation. Bishop Curry asks us that question, who are you going to be? How are you going to shine the light of God's love to a darkening world in this country? All authority was given to Jesus Christ, and he asks us to go and walk the walk. Martin Luther King Jr. was an example of how to be bold and go out of our churches and into the streets to care for those in need. But we are called, as we prepare for February, which is Black History Month, for all the wonderful things we have in store for us, including children's books on Tuesdays, witnessing on Sundays in February. Martin Luther King Jr. said, it's all right to talk about streets flowing with milk and honey, but God has commanded us to be concerned about the slums down here and his children who can't eat three square meals a day. I've heard that food insecurity has tripled in the United States during this COVID pandemic. And this week we were out in the church delivering food and feminine products and 4,000 masks that we may be safe and careful and help those who are in need. King knew that his words might lead to his death, and yet his words have led to a better life for millions of African Americans, and yet we still have so far to go. I ask you to be bold as we come to these coming weeks. If you would like to witness, I ask you to give me a call, a three to five minute witness on where you stand on racial reconciliation. We will listen to everyone that wants to talk. Jesus Christ crossed boundaries with self-giving love, and that's exactly what we're called to do today. In 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. wrote from a jail in Birmingham, was not Amos an extremist for justice? Let justice roll down the waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Was not Abraham Lincoln an extremist? This nation cannot survive half slave and half free. So the question is not whether we will be extremists, but what kind of extremists will we be? Will we be extremists for hate? Or will we be extremists for love? Will we be extremists for the preservation of injustice? Or we, will we be extremists for the cause of justice? Jesus Christ was an extremist for love. You are called to follow Jesus and to go out from this place. Really easy today, honestly, because you can do it from your own living room. You can get on your computer and witness to a lot of people, a couple hundred people in person, and several hundred people on the internet. Many years later, Martin Luther King Jr. would describe the glimpse of what it looked like when the reign of God comes near. He said, one day, every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall do it together. One day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at a table of brotherhood. God calls each and every one of us during this season of chaos to become the beloved cute community that we are talking about with our sacred ground program. I have asked you and continue to ask you not to talk about politics, but to talk about justice, talk about Jesus Christ. Martin Luther King Jr., who we celebrate this weekend, helped a whole generation to 
see where the ways of heaven begin. To get an unlikely foothold on earth, he helped us to remember that walking with Jesus means working for justice. It means helping the poor, clothing the naked. It means feeding the hungry, looking after those who are in prison and those who are lonely, the widows and the orphans. We each are called, as Nathaniel was, by Jesus Christ. But like Nathaniel, we just want to be up and against and arguing with one another. And yet, if we sit quietly and listen under a tree or in our living room, we will realize that we are called to go out into the world and to shine the light of Christ to the world. And we need to be confident and do it boldly. We need to see that the path of our culture is headed towards chaos. We need to listen to one another. Listen instead of criticizing. Listen instead of posting your opinion. Listen to those with other opinions. Because together, if we would just come into community, we can solve a lot of our problems today. Only in the light of God can we change our path from chaos to beloved community? By giving up ourselves for the sake of the poor, we can shine God's light to a world that ne desperately needs it. By standing up and boldly speaking for justice, we can shine a light to all of God's love.